afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Charles Richards. I'm the chair of the Pirin St. Blazy Community Flood Group and also heavily involved in the Cornwall Community Flood Forum. I've been asked this afternoon to give a case study about um, a, 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 um, a project that was put together to manage exceedance on the Prido stream, which is um, the catchment north of St. Blazy in Cornwall. It all came about um, following heavy rainfall um, back in 2010 on the 17th of November. Um, we had a, a very, very um, strong frontal system that um, ran from the southwest, right down on the Lizard Peninsula, all the way through mid Cornwall and then heading up to North Cornwall over Bodmin Moor. That um, overnight deposited something in the region of about um, 100 millimeters of rain in, in our region alone. And some of the peak rainfall, rainfall um, intensities reached about 40 millimetres and in some parts higher um, in one hour. In mid Cornwall, 300 properties were actually flooded. Um, and in St. Blasey alone, we had 55, including some commercial properties. The impact on the ground in St. Blasey was pretty um, extensive. Um, and uh, one thing I should mention is that I don't actually work for um, a local authority. I'm actually a volunteer. Um, my day job is running the family business, which is the petrol station on the left-hand side there. Um, and all the time that I've put in um, since in the last three years has actually been as a volunteer. The, the picture that we see there of the road is the A390 through Cornwall. Um, and if anybody of you know Cornwall pretty well, there's only sort of two main arterial roads running um, through the county. There's the A30, which runs down the central spine. And then on the south, there's the A390. The rainfall actually brought the A390 to a complete halt, pretty much outside of our garage. And we actually closed it down for 48 hours to let traffic run through the back of the garage and then bypassing the heavy water that you can see there and then actually get safely out the other side. That car actually broke down in the, in the water. This is actually after the water's actually receded by quite a bit. It was actually about three foot deep before that. And the source of that water is actually from the right hand side up there. There's a small road, um, which is the Prido Road which is actually at the, the bottom, the southern part of the Prido catchment. It's a fairly innocuous catchment, very, very small stream. It's an ordinary water course running through it. And then just where this photo is taken, there's an, then actually a much, much larger um, main river, the Pa River, which then runs through the catchment and then back out to sea. So one of the challenges that we really had is how could we stop rainfall um, from that Prido catchment getting down through the road and then down into the A390. The main problem we had was that the water that was building up in the, in the river catchment in the ordinary water course was actually choosing to jump out of channel under extreme um, weather conditions and then actually choose to go down the road as a super efficient stream. And it's just much, much easier for it to travel down the road and then straight into the A390 than actually go where it's supposed to. Um, for those of you who can see, there's a sign up there saying the Eden Project. This is actually about a mile away from the Eden Project, which you also might know actually had about two and a half million pounds worth of damage because um, it actually sits in the, in the bottom of a basin. Um, but that just gives some indication there of, of the, the level of water that was building up on the A390 after that event. The scheme that we've actually put together um, actually helps stop water then running through further into the town itself. This is a picture of, the, of Aberdeen Close, which is another, re another residential area which feeds off from the A390. Um, and a further nine properties were flooded through here. Water then went straight through this housing estate and then down into Station Road where another 25 were affected. Um, and at the bottom of that you can actually see two, two cars actually floating which were actually washed down this road by the power of the water which was running out, um, out of the stream, um, stream catchment. The solution that we come up with, I'll, I'll talk through in a second, um, it was basically a joint initiative developed by Cornwall Council um, and then funded very, very heavily by the Environment Agency. And it was put together largely um, by Rob Hancock and Theresa Frost of Cornwall Council. And I'm mentioning their names because without them this would not have happened. Um, the role that those two individuals played in actually 
breaking down some of the barriers between authorities and some of the barriers between different aspects of the development were actually fundamental to the success of this particular project. Um, the main aims of the scheme were to repair damage to the road and the stream itself. Um, that volume of water in such a short, flashy flood that we had basically eroded hugely the stream itself, incised many of the, the borders on the side of the road, um, and a huge amount of repair work had to be done. The other aim of it was to actually reduce the volume of surface water reaching the town and trying to prevent, in quite a, a cost-effective way, further flooding in the town itself. Prido Stream Solution is basically, you can see on the left-hand picture there, the plan that we've come up with is to actually develop um, an adverse camber and a runoff area um, on the side of the road. So water actually running down the road down this way reaches a dam area just about here. It's a raised area and then gets channeled and dumped back into the stream once it's actually um, broken out of channel. Um, the dam we've called a false summit. The stream channel um, has also been improved. We've got some tunnelized timber along the side there to actually strengthen the side of it. Um, and also many of the trees were actually removed to get rid of some of the, um, the bigger roots which were actually creeping into the channel and then actually causing pinch points and encroaching upon the capacity of that channel. Another pinch point which you can just about see where that sign is, there's a small bridge uh, which actually dramatically reduced the capacity of the channel at that point. The solution we came up with on that one was to actually dredge out 35 tonnes of silt. So we've actually lowered the channel depth um, to actually get, gain extra clearance on that little bit of bridge there. This picture probably shows better than anything this raised area, the sort of dam area, which actually just sits downstream of that little gully, which then drops the water back out into the, into the main stream itself. That's only raised by about 300 millimetres, so not as much as it probably looks on there, um, but enough to actually stop the water getting further down. When it's working, this is what it looks like. Um, usually, we would have water coming down into the A390 about three times every year. Um, so it's quite a regular occurrence. This is what it actually looks like. And as you can see, the water now just flows ever so nicely back into the, um, back into the stream again. In terms of community consultation, which is obviously something which I was involved in, um, the main bulk of it was um, direct engagement with private landowners. Um, and actually speaking to the landowners and the, and the householders very, very close to the development um, and actually talking through and explaining to them the purpose of the, of the, of the project and the solution and how it's actually going to work. Following the 2010 floods, we also set up something called the Cornwall Community Flood Recovery Groups. Those were multi-agency groups requested by the community and established by Cornwall Council and the Environment Agency we met about every six weeks, and we used those multi-agency groups as the main conduit of information to and fro between the community and the local authorities following those floods. The success of those groups in terms of generating community engagement was so massive that we actually then reconstituted those groups into the Cornwall Community Flood Forum, which is still running now, and it's been hugely successful in generating lottery funding, um, and also it's one of the 13 DEFRA-funded um, Flood Resilience Community Pathfinder projects. Through the flood recovery groups, we were able to engage with the um, elected councillors, town and parish councils, and also the local community flood groups. What challenges did we face during this? First one is the public good versus the rights of private landowners. What we've actually done in channeling the water back into the stream is that we've actually moved the water away from the road and back into a stream which then flows back into the main river, which is the Par River. In doing that, the water is now passing very, very close to about six properties. So while it's benefiting some properties in terms of moving it away from the town centre, it's now moving it much, much closer to the properties which previously were not at risk of flooding. And that's one of the things that we've had to address in actually do, balancing up the good um, that this project's bringing. And one of the ways around that is, is we've actually undertaken um, a community engagement exercise 
and through the Cormorant Community Flood Forum, we've set up um, some training guidance modules, um, some of which we've got here, um, which are actually explaining um, the, how flood risk management works, and in particular, riparian ownership. And riparian ownership seems to be one of those things which many people living next to um, ordinary watercourses and main rivers fail to understand. And what we've tried to explain is their responsibilities and their rights as landowners in terms of maintaining water channels and actually carrying out some of the maintenance work. And through the flood group um, locally, we've actually gone out into the stream, put on Wellington boots, and we've actually undertaken some of the maintenance ourselves. Cause of flooding, nature versus design. In designing this exceedance route, what we're actually doing is we're actually channeling water, as I said before, towards these particular houses. While many houses are, many householders are actually um, can kind of accept being flooded through natural causes, it's another thing trying to understand being flooded when somebody's actually designed it to go towards your property. And that's something else which we've had to deal with. Another issue which's come up is flood risk management versus road safety. Clearly, we've actually raised the road, we've put a bump in there, and we've also put on an adverse camber. Fortunately, that part of the road is actually in a 30 zone. Had it been in something like a 50 or a national speed limit, I'd be surprised if the scheme would have gone through as easily as it, as easily as it had done. Maintenance of the solution is maintenance of the solution. The ongoing maintenance is another challenge that we found. One thing to bear in mind in this is that it's not just about flood water. There's a lot more that gets carried down through these things other than just clean, pure water. Um, sediment has been um, a huge problem, and when we actually get to periods of peak flow, we've got rocks the size of footballs actually rolling down that road. One of the challenges is actually how we actually keep that debris, keep that sediment back from then actually blocking up those, those channels um, even further. Just want to finish off with talking about some other community initiatives that we're doing within St. Blasey. Um, one of those is through the DEFRA Flood Resilience Community Pathfinder, which I mentioned earlier. There are two sources of um, water which actually enter the A390. One of them I mentioned before, um, which was actually from this scheme that we've, we've been talking about. And then the other one is from a road very close to it, which comes from, which is called Cornhill, which has water coming down from um, farmland, basically. Um, what we've actually done is we've developed a project in conjunction with a company called Climate Vision and the Probation Service, where we've actually got um, people on the community payback scheme actually going out and clearing drains of leaves and clearing leaf litter from that road. So it's actually making sure that the drainage system on that particular road is used to its capacity at all times and it's not being blocked by the leaves. And that's a picture there um, of um, a part of a nine ton um, accumulation of leaves which were collected um, over this winter. Neighborhood planning. Uh, many of you might know about neighborhood plans. Introduced through the Localism Act of 2011 and effective in the last two years, St. Blasey um, is actually working on a neighborhood plan at the moment, and as a community, we're working with the town council to try to come up with initiatives and schemes to positively manage flood water within the town. And what we're trying to do is to develop a path plan through community consultation to try to design an area and, and uh, direct development so that we can actually mitigate flood risk wherever possible. Another thing we're trying is um, flood risk management through design. Our local football club, um, very, very community minded, um, is trying to plan um, a community sports centre. And this is a provisional plan that we've got um, at the moment. Um, and that one is actually based on um, a raised floor plan. Um, so we've actually got effectively little stilts underneath um, and, a, and a foundation system base filled with crushed glass, which makes the, um, the base actually permeable. Um, and that's something which we're working on at the moment to try to have a positive gain in terms of flood risk. And this is a photo, again, of um, St. Blasey Football Club taken a few days after the flood in 2010. Uh, which shows um, more than half of the pitch there underwater and some sediment still on there. One of the things we're looking at with the football club through the local flood group and the town council um, and trying to build into our neighbourhood plan is how we can actually use this space for attenuation. 
um, and we're looking at the possibility of actually developing, probably just raising the bunding around the pitch by about another um, 300 millimetres so that we can actually retain water. And the club has actually kindly agreed that we can actually use some um, spare land on that western side there to actually um, build further bunding um, and hold back more water. Yeah. Lessons and recommendations. Cost effectiveness. Cornwall is an area where the traditional cost-benefit analysis and models which are drawn up, we rarely get big community schemes. We just don't generate the funding to, to win that kind of money. This scheme, on the other hand, has actually generated a solution that works on something which is much more affordable. This scheme costs somewhere in the region of about £50,000 to put together, and the benefits um, have been enormous. As I said before, we used to flood on that road about three times a year to a greater or lesser extent. We've just gone through the wettest winter probably for the last 250 years, and certainly based upon Met Office data for the last 110 years, and we haven't had one incidence of water getting onto the A390. It has worked, and that also in conjunction with the leaf litter clearing project. Community engagement and consultation has been the key. Multi-agency groups, as far as I'm concerned, are the way forwards. Um, and it's actually helped the community get on to meet with the local authorities, whether it's South West Water, Cornwall Council, or the Environment Agency, and actually share contacts, actually build up trust and a relationship on an ongoing basis. And through that, as was mentioned earlier, in the provision of road signs and that sort of thing, um, through our lottery funding, we've actually got and we've actually distributed road signs, sandbags, and that sort of thing, and high vis jackets for the flood wardens. And through guidance and consent with the local police and Cornwall Council, we actually can go out and close, close that main A390 if we need to. And the other one, neighbourhood planning. Neighbourhood planning is growing um, at the moment, and it's a great opportunity for yourselves to actually buy into communities and work with communities to come up with strategies to, to mitigate flood risk and design for exceedance.